I always believe that if you never try, you will never know. Lah. So I took the leap of faith and I also opened a hawker store. Hi, my name is Samuel. I'm 24 this year and I'm the owner of Box of Taste. My store is located at Upper Boon Keng Food Centre and uh, I sell Chan Kui Tiao. Uh, since young, I've always explored the cooking at home. Uh, I always watch like uh, cooking videos on online. Then I also like try it out. Then uh, subsequently, uh, my passion for cooking grew even further. Uh, like at, at barbecues, I will always help out to start the fire. Uh, that's why I'm very passionate about cooking. And uh, previously, I was actually studying in a local U. And then during that period of time, it was a COVID period. Then uh, lectures were online. And I found myself actually uh, watching cooking videos instead of the lecture videos that I was supposed to watch. Yeah, so when I chanced upon the entrepreneurship program, I went for it instead. It was a tough decision to make, but with the support of my parents, I'm glad they, I, I went for it also. The, the funny thing is that it's actually my father who uh, told me about the uh, entrepreneurship program after he listened it through uh, the radio. At that time, he casually mentioned it and I went to look it up. Then it actually, it actually sparked my interest or like it gave me the purpose like, oh, actually maybe this is what I was meant to do in the future. Lah. Because all along, I haven't been, have an idea of what I'm going to do in the future. Even though I like study uh, the aerospace engineering, but actually I did not really want to pursue a job in related to in that field. Lah. So uh, my mentor is actually from uh, Clementi 448 Hawker Centre. The, the store name is Snow Mount. Uh, the store it sells two things. Uh. So half the store sells growing design and half sells strategy. So when I was attached there, it was really very cramped uh, because uh, one side had to be frying this uh, growing pisang, then one side had to be frying chakwe tiao. I, I chose chakwe tiao because ever since young, I, I grew up eating it. So it's uh, actually like a sort of a comfort food to me. So, so whenever my, when I go to JV or this, my parents would uh, like bring me to the local food stalls and then let me try that. Then I grew fond of it subsequently. La. I tried experimenting like cooking it at home in the past. Uh, but it always tasted different. Uh. After opening a hawker store, I do realize why it tasted so different. It's actually got to do with the fire and the wok. Uh. It has to have the enough, they call it uh, hua ho. Uh. You know, it must be well controlled and also sufficient heat too. When I first came to look at the store that I was that I've chosen, a lot of people are uh, mistaken that it will be my father frying because uh, he also accompanied me to see. So when they learned about me that I'm the one that's frying, they were quite surprised. Uh. Even though they ne did not say anything, but maybe if they might have some doubts, but uh, I'm glad that in the end, everything worked out fine. Uh. I always believe that if you never try, you will never know. Uh. So I took the leap of faith and I also opened a hawker store. Even though I could have not opened a hawker store, uh, even after joining a program, but I decided to follow my passion still and I uh, just give it a shot. Uh. And I'm glad I went for it and gave it a try. Uh. So uh, some of the injuries that I got it was actually like the loss of strength in the fingers and they were not as uh, nimble as before. La. It's like when I try to start a car, la, like you have to twist the key. Ma. So even that, I did not have the strength to twist the key. La. So actually I thought like uh, in the starting months, I had this problem. La. It might be because I overtaxed my hand too much, uh, especially with the crowd all this. La. Subsequently, I tried to take it easy, la, not, not to be too intense when frying. Uh, so like, if the crowd can wait, uh, they can wait. Uh, I try not to push myself too much. Uh. So initially, when I first opened the store, I had a language barrier with some customers. Uh. Like most of the people here are the old, of the older generation, so they tend to speak Hokkien and Cantonese more. Then, uh, as you know, I uh, also very young that I did not really interact with the older gen, uh, so I might not be that fluent in the other dialects. Uh. So like when they order Chak Kui Tiao, they will speak in Hokkien and I'll be like at a total loss. Uh. As uh, months went by, then I slowly learned from them and understand their language. Uh, their language. I feel that nowadays, Singaporeans would not really want to work in the hawker environment. Uh. Unless their parents already have a stall that has been running for a decade or something, then they, the children might feel more obliged to continue on that legacy. Uh. But I, I, I feel that it's very important to that the younger generation actually step up and uh, try to preserve the Singapore hawker culture uh, as it's, it's been with us for a very long time ago. La. And one of the reasons why I also want to sell Chuck Pitao is because that uh, it's a dying trade. Like not many uh, youngsters actually fry Chuck Pitao. 